when things will be happening and it will be clear that they are not happening in response to man's doings or his will, but in response to God's doing and God's will. And it is put in this language that wait until you see God come with his clock, with his clock, with his time piece. What time is it by your clock? You will give us that time. What time is it by God's clock? God has to reveal that. God has to make us know that. <clears throat> there are a lot of things that are happening in this modern world, in our time, that to me is very clear signs for people of faith. Among modern world developments are signs and support for faith in God. Signs as powerful as the parting of the waters mentioned in the Old Testament, the crossing of the Red Sea and the Jordan River. These signs are very powerful. Some of us see things happening and witness changes in the world, but we don't do what God asks us to do, and that is not just see things, but reflect on them. Reflect on them as believers in God. Refer back to your scripture, to prophecies, and to scripture. So you will know what time is it by God's clock, not by yours. So you will know what time is it by God's clock. <clears throat> we have seen the Cold War period ended. We lived in fear for a time. The fear of horrible consequences, perhaps the destruction of society as we know it on this earth by the superpowers if they decided to go to war with each other with the great stockpile of nuclear weapons that they had and still have. We feared the destruction of society as we know it. And without us being able to predict the end of that time, the end came. The end came, the great Soviet Union was dismantled, and only one superpower remained. And we have stopped fearing what could happen if the wrong phone was picked up by the President of these United States and war was declared between the great superpowers. That time of fear is gone. And we find that almost the next morning, a vast land that we thought had become atheist or was without belief and practice by the faithful of God, faithful followers of God was seen, as I said, almost the next morning with many, many people of faith ready to publicly practice their faith or their religion. Christians, Muslims, and others. We were told a story of, which was a true story, of the survival of Muslim learned persons in leadership, strong parents who secretly protected their religion and shared it with their children secretly. 
so that Islam would survive communist domination over them. We were told that parents and teachers would awake in the wee hours of the night and they would teach their children. Say, so if the soldiers would see, or the officers, the police, would see light on at night or early in the morning, they would be suspicious and most likely they would come in and investigate to see what you're doing. Says, so, but the, in the wee, wee hours of the night, they thought everybody was asleep for sure, and that was when they would get up and wake their children and share with their children their, their knowledge of their religion. So they were educating, secretly educating, their youngsters to carry on the religion, carry on the responsibility of sharing their religion with others and living it themselves. And after 70 years of being denied religious freedom, almost the next day in the morning, they began establishing, opening up schools and colleges. And now they have many colleges in Russia for, ed for the education of Muslim children, uh, Muslim youth, and Muslim adults who want to qualify in Islam, in higher, higher education. And something very similar happened for Christian leaders, uh, leadership, and the Christians of Russia or the Soviet bloc. The same thing happened for them. They preserved their religion and they preserved their knowledge quietly and secretly. And as soon as freedom came again for them to practice their religion, it was established as though it only slept for a night of 70 years and woke up fresh as they were the day before they slept. Isn't that wonderful? I think that's a sign from God. It's a sign from God, mighty sign from God. But there are more signs for, from God. God speaks of, of the earth itself. This body, huge spherical body we call the earth that we live on and live from, Responding to God one day against misguided man and corrupt man's abuse of the earth. So, and the earth will, will behave, I'm giving you a quote from the Quran, the earth will behave as though she had received revelation from her Lord, revelation from her Lord. I believe, <clears throat> I believe what we are calling globalization now, globalizing trends, and what we are calling glo globalization, and the one, one world economy, global market, the global marketplace. I believe that these developments are fulfilling that potent prophecy in the Quran that says, or which says, one day the earth is going to behave as though her Lord had revealed to her, had revealed to her the earth itself. I don't think that means the physical stones and or the virtual stones and uh, sands and 
<laughs> and soil and trees and uh, rivers and lakes and all that. I don't think it means that, not quite that, but, but uh, by interpretation, it means exactly that. By interpretation, it means exactly that. The role of waters, the value of waters to commercial, to commercial man, the value of the land to commercial man, the value of the winds to commercial man, the value of the sun and the, that heats the earth and the growth that comes out because of the climate that is of importance to, man, the, to commercial man. That these elements and this earth, all of these elements, in man's commercial interest, are going to speak out against abuses that man has made, abuses of the use, the, the proper, proper use, the correct use of these things. I recall in my life being a young man before my teens and during my teens, I recall how powerful our nation was, the United States of America, and I recall how the West dominated other lands, and how we as citizens of this great nation, it was great then, it's greater now, I think, citizens of this great nation had a much higher standard of living than other nations, that our nation was much more powerful and much more richer than other nations because our nation was using the natural resources, the minerals, et cetera, of other nations and giving them little or nothing in return. But the day has come now when economic justice is being called for and the material realities are no longer in the hands of one nation, not even this great United States of America. The material realities are now in God's charge. You may not see it that way, but that's how I see it. Man hasn't brought this about. God has brought it about. When education influences for awakening the conscience of the most backward and illiterate people have reached them through the powerful media that some of our men, great men and great writers of insight have identified as a liberating tool in this modern time. A liberating tool in this modern time. Television. Television. Television has its problems, we know. We have many complaints against Pro, some programs on television. But television has also been the means for reaching masses of people all around this world and bringing the true picture of world communities to every community on this earth fortunate enough to have a television. We think we are in charge of everything. We think we are in charge of ourselves. We think we are in charge of the material resources. We think we are in charge of the economy. We think we are in charge of the wealth. God is always in charge. We are not even in charge of ourselves. God is always in charge. But he is the hidden force. He is the hidden force. And he is watching over us according to scripture He's watching over us all the time. And he, he knows when we are going to veer off course and have a terrible collision and cause great destruction to ourselves and others. God knows that. And sometimes God's let that happen. 
And God is in the accident. And God is in control of the accident. And God comes out unaffected by the accident. And we recover and don't know that it was God all the time. God all the time overseeing the works of his creatures and making sure that if they make mistakes, they will recover from those mistakes. And God is the one who can take a plus and make it a minus, take a minus and make it a plus. God is the one that can do that. And look how communism was a great minus. And look how God has now made it a great plus. Because now it is history in, for the Soviet Union. They might go back to it, we don't know. But I don't think they can go back to it. <laughs> I really don't. But it is history for us. And it is a sign for us that these things that go against the will of God are temporary. God's way is permanent. And what seems to be a hurt can also be a means for us to have a better life after the hurt than we could have had before the hurt. And to me, it's a sign from God. Islam is to be understood by Muslims. We need knowledge from the, from the highest sources of Islam to correctly understand our own religion, to correctly identify our own life, what the Muslim life is. We need knowledge from the Quran, and we need the knowledge of the human person that received the revelation, the Quran, the Quran, and introduced for the first time Islam to the world of people, to this world of human people, human beings, nations. Muhammad ibn Abdullah of Mecca, Arabia, prayers and peace be on him. Our religion is the religion of peace. It's the religion of peace. Peace is so prevalent in our religion. Our name is Muslim, meaning person who accepts peace. Muslim is from Salam, peace. Our greetings is Salam, peace. And we are told to look for a day when we will arrive at the abode of peace, Dar es Salaam, the abode of peace. And we are told that our God is the source of peace, that he is the peace. Our God, the God of all people, the God of the universe, we are told that he is the peace. So how can a religion that has so much peace in it, in its composition, in its important language, in its most important terminologies. How can that religion say so much to peace, address peace so much, and we not be a peace-seeking people? We look at the life of Muhammad, the prophet, prayers and peace be on him, and we think of him as a warrior. He did not want to be a warrior. He had to be asked by God to take up arms. He was a peacemaker. He was a lover of peace. He suffered and took abuses and didn't return the blow or the fight because he wanted to give people the message and not fight them. But the idolaters were a people that were not enlightened. They were not an enlightened people. 
Muhammad was born in an idolatrous society. They worship, they worship idols. They didn't have the right concept of God. So they didn't value human beings, the life of human persons, and, and a human society, like civilized nations of Christians and others, value human life and human society. They were savage in many ways. They were cruel savages in many ways. The prophet suffered enough, and it was God who knew the time to tell him to rise up. And God permitted him to return the attack, to defend the mission and the community, the Muslims, the faithful, against the war makers. He was not a war maker. On the day of victory, when he was victorious in the peninsula we call Arabia, Saudi Arabia now. On the day of victory, what did he do? He did like the prophet David in the Bible, peace be upon David. He forgave his enemies. And he told them, he proclaimed that as long as they accept the order of peace, as long as they, his enemies accepted the order of peace, they would have no fear. Their lives and their properties would be protected by the state, by the new Islamic state. He didn't tell them that, that as long as you believe, no, he didn't say that. He said, as long as you accept the peace. Which means you didn't have to become a Muslim. He forgave the enemies and didn't say, you must now become Muslim. No, he did not. Christians were existing before in territories that the Muslim had won, and they continue to exist. And he said that he mandated that they practice their religion as they had practiced it before. There was no demands on them to change their religion or to get rid of it or to become Muslim. He said the same to the Jews. He mandated the freedom of religion also for, for the Jews. So if this great man forgave his enemies and permitted those of other religions to continue to live, practice their religion as they had practiced before, he even didn't go out witch hunting seeking idol worshippers, spying on them to see if they still worship the idols. He didn't do that. All he asked is that they accept the new order to live in peace and to keep the peace. Muhammad the prophet, we should know him, uh, uh, brother Muslims. We should know our prophet. We should know the model man, the model human being that God gave us who is a mercy to all the nations, as God says in the Quran. We should know him. He's not a warmonger. He was never a warmonger. He's a peacemaker. He was always a peacemaker. He is a liberator. He came to champion the cause of the freedom of religion, not to persecute the religious communities, but to champion the cause of the freedom of religion. And God says to us of Muhammad that his model as a human model is enough to satisfy any people who believe in God and the last day. Any people, Christian, Jews, and others, he is enough as a human model to satisfy, he's sufficient to satisfy any people who believe in God and believe in the last day. Do you think they are not Christians who respect Muhammad? There are many Christians who respect Muhammad, and it didn't just occur in this century. There have been in every century since Muhammad's day, Christians of higher learning and higher education and those of the common people who have great respect for Muhammad, 
the persecutors of people, the persecutors of human life, the oppressors of mankind, the oppressors of humanity, the war among us, those who greed, have greed for power, and greed for the wealth, greed for the resources, resources of the world. They're the ones <coughs> that have promoted this clash, clashing of Muslim and Christians, the Crusades, and the religious hatred that we know in history gone and in present history. They're the ones that have secretly promoted this evil. There are good Christians and good Jews that have never bought the opinion of those who persecuted Islam. And there are good Muslims who have never bought the opinion of our Muslim leaders and Muslim powers that have persecuted Christians, done wrong by them, or done wrong by Jews, or any people of faith. There are those of us that have always looked at the Christians with respect and looked at the Jews with respect, respecting them as people to whom God sent messengers, prophets, and people who follow the path of God and live the life of faith, faith in God. So don't let <clears throat> the rule and the power and presence and dominance of wrongdoers blind us to the truth of history, the history of the people of faith, what they really are, and what they are really committed to, are obligated to uphold. Don't be blinded, don't be, don't be misguided or fooled by those who are in power because their power and their rule is temporary. And God's way is permanent. 